2021, staying positive. <laughs> Hi everyone, and welcome to the Pitchfork Fiber Podcast. My name is Hunter, and this is episode 20. I'm here in Chicago, Illinois, in the United States of America, on this kind of cold and dreary gray day. And I'm hoping that talking with you all today about my knitting and things I've been working on will definitely brighten that day up and um, hopefully bring some something exciting to your day as well. Um, it's 2021. It's already started with a quite rocky start and so um, I thought it would be fun to kind of jump on here and chat with you all today about some things, some exciting things, and um, maybe to get your mind off of what's going on in the world. So uh, I have uh, quite a lot to talk to you about today and I'm hoping that we can just dive right into some knitting and some things that are on my needles. So without further ado, I thought I would start off with my finished object. <laughs> You know, my first finished object, I have kind of been, I've shown you quite a bit. I've been working on it for forever. Um, if you follow me on my Instagram, at Pitchfork Fiber, you will have seen um, some photos that I posted of my brother. I photographed him in Michigan wearing my Huron sweater, my blue um, Huron sweater. And you also will have seen a photo shoot that me and my boyfriend Matt took on our front porch wearing both of our matching Huron sweaters. So uh, 2020 was the year of the Huron sweater, I guess. Um, I loved the pattern. It knit so fast and I knit it with Brooklyn Tweed. Um, so this finished, I've already shown you my finished, uh, uh, the finished sweater for Matt, which was using the Hayloft colorway, but here's mine. This is the Huron sweater in, uh, by, this is by um, Jared Flood, Brooklyn Tweed yarn in Old World, which is the dark navy, and Iceberg in the kind of icy blue-gray. Um, I'm obsessed with this monochromatic colorwork yoke and I love how it's not necessarily as, um, it's still contrasted, but it's not as contrasted. It definitely is really, um, kind of just like melts together and I love that effect. I've worn this quite a lot, quite a lot already, so I'm definitely getting use out of it. And I don't know, I just, I'm obsessed. Like this, when I first made the, the first one from Matt, I, was obsessed and then I knew I had to make myself one and um, just the pattern is so quick it's so fun and it's so fast you know I've already talked about this a lot in my past episodes but I just really love the pattern and it was so easy to make the fit is absolutely perfect and to be honest I might even just in the future use the pattern uh, as kind of just like a basic sweater it's top it's from the bottom up um, and for some reason, the way that it fits me is just exactly, um, is exactly how I like my sweaters to fit. I did add some short rows in the back of the neck, um, right around here to just kind of bring it up in the back and make it a little bit more like a crew neck sweater, uh, sweatshirt. Um, and that's something that I really enjoy wearing. So that is done and I've gotten so much use out of it already. I'm obsessed like I've said, and we'll definitely be using that pattern again in the future. So that is um, my finished, my first finished object of, I guess it would, I finished it, you know, before Christmas in 2020, but I haven't shown you it finished on the podcast. So just that. Um, another finished object I have, I guess it's a half object, but I have finished my uh, my first pair of socks of 2021. This was finished, I guess it was finished in 2020, but it's not fully, it's not fully complete, so, oh well. But this is my, this is just a plain vanilla sock. Um, it is a, I did this one different, this is my first ever sock I did on double points. Um, I've never done a sock on double points, and it was fun, like it was something different. Did I like it as much as Circular Magic Loop? No, I didn't. It definitely was still a little fiddly, but it was fun doing something different. 
Uh, this yarn is Lolo Did It in the Oh Holy Night colorway. So this is a Christmas colorway. And I love the speckly quality. I love how it almost is like stripey without being repetitive and kind of even. So I really like that. Um, the colors are really, let's see if we can get it to focus. The colors are kind of teal, um, almost like evergreen colors with the, um, with speckles of kind of cream and uh, cranberry and wine. So just like a really pretty colorway. I liked it. It knitted up real fast. I casted it on before Christmas and I finished this sock um, just before Christmas. And then I started on my next sock, which then brings me to um, some of my other works in progress. This is the yarn caked up. My yarn ball has kind of traveled everywhere. I brought this um, to Ohio, back to my parents, and then also to Michigan where I was for the holidays. So um, it's kind of crazy, but this is what it looks like in the cake. And this is the progress I have on my second sock. So I'm nearing um, time to do the heel. I did a 60 stitch uh, cast it on, toe up, uh, 60 stitches on US 1 or 2.25 millimeter needles. Um, I like my socks to fit pretty snug and I have a really loose gauge. So the US 1s and the 60 stitches works well for me. I use a fish lips kiss heel on the first sock. Um, yeah, super easy. They're really fun. I lost one of the needles that so i only have four dpns and i lost one oh i know where it is but i couldn't get it it was um, dropped underneath the car like underneath the passenger seat of the car and you know when cars have like the inner workings of it you know like it moving up and down and all those you know just like the stuff under the the seat well it got stuck in like the track of the seat and i for the life of me couldn't get it out and I just thought, you know what, I'll use the four for now. And if my brother ever details or cleans his car, he can always give it back to me. So, uh, but yeah, so I lost, uh, we had one needle um, lost in a fatality in the car, but I was knitting on it on the way to Michigan when I was driving up with my brother. So um, that, uh, yeah, so I lost it then, but. Yeah, so that's the socks. I really like them. Um, and I always think it's fun to just kind of have socks. I, I've i not really been into sock knitting just because I have been so into sweaters. Um, 2020 was kind of the year of the sweater for me. I knit uh, three, I completed three full sweaters um, and then am halfway with another one that I started in 2020. So for me, four, nearly four sweaters is a lot just because I don't, I often get into a routine where I knit a lot and then I stop. I don't, um, you know, I'm not normally a consistent knitter throughout the whole year, always knitting on something. I kind of bounce around in the summer. And so four is, is really great for me and I'm really proud of them. And the ones I completed are all sweaters that I wear consistently and love them so equally. And the one sweater that isn't even mine, I still will steal from Matt and I will wear it. Shh. So, um, uh, but I also have been working on some other things as well. Um, I went to, so a little backstory, I went to, uh, my parents have a cabin in Cedar, Michigan, which is near Traverse City, um, kind of northern part of Michigan, in still in the, not the Upper Peninsula, but the northern part of the Minton, as people say. And um, Cedar is also home to the yarn shop wool and honey which is like i don't know if you if you don't follow wool and honey on instagram um definitely check them out they have a beautiful stunning curated selection of yarns in their store um they are still open during the pandemic with reduced numbers of people let in so you know you felt super safe but i, ha I had to check them out when i went and um i picked up two skeins of yarn and i picked up these are both yarn both these yarns are stick 
six and seven fiber. Um, I don't have, for some reason, in that transition from Michigan to Chicago, I lost the the band, yard band, so I don't necessarily know the colorways. So if any of you do know, please comment below, but this is in the mohair and this is in the sock 75%, I think it was 10% cashmere, 10% nylon, 80% merino, I think. This is super soft um, and I love the colors of kind of um, tans and fawn and speckles of blue and yellow, really beautiful. Very sandy, kind of reminded me of the, the rocky beaches of Northern Michigan and paired with the mohair is really scrumptious. This is my first time ever knitting with mohair. So um, I've been finding it really fun. I'm holding those two double and I'm making the Oslo hat by Petite Knits. Um, and I'm doing the mohair edition and this is how far I am. So um, if you've not knitted the Oslo hat, it basically is knit with a really large brim. Um, so this is the brim and then this will be the hat and I'm right at the point where I'll decrease for the crown and this will be then folded up and kind of sewn up here so that when it's flipped over, it's all in stockinette. So um, really, I really enjoy it. I love the way they look. They look so classic. I love the classic folded brim. Plus this is mohair, it's gonna be warm. And with four layers or three or four layers, um, once it's folded up, will be super warm. Um, I did cast on, so I didn't swatch, but I just thought, you know, I measured my head circumference. When you buy the pattern, it gives you different head circumference measurements to tell you which size to make. And based on mine, I was knitting like, I think the medium, um, but I soon realized after I cast it on that that was gonna be way too small. So I ended up just kind of ripping it back and knitting um, the largest size, which makes sense. But um, I am knitting this on a smaller needle, again, because I have a larger gauge. And I also wanted it to be thicker just because I wanted the hat to be really warm. Um, I've knitted hats before in fingering weight and they just are a little bit too loose to really, you know, especially here in Chicago, the wind, it really cuts through and it really makes your head and ears cold. So I wanted this to be warm. Um, and I think it still is actually a little bit smaller than, it's still smaller than the gauge required, but with blocking, I think it will be fine. So this has been really fun. Like, oh my gosh, it's so soft. Like. The cashmere, the the mohair, oh, it's so soft. And I love the color. It's really, really beautiful. You still get the speckle kind of a variegation of the, of the yarn, but then the mohair just kind of evens it out. So I've been working on that. That's really fun. I only have the decrease of the crown left um, and then it's done. So super easy. Um, what else have I, am I working on? Oh, my next sweater. So I also have another sweater on the needles. Um, and this is the Lilanol sweater. I feel like last time I showed you, it was just yarn, but I'm not sure. I don't know if I've actually shown you this in progress, but um, I have the body complete. And this is the Lilanol sweater by uh, Melin Melinda, Bernardi and I am knitting I don't know what size I'm knitting maybe a medium I might be knitting a small but the gauge I got would worked out to give me the size I wanted so this is it this is with Brooklyn Tweed yarn of again of course because I love Brooklyn Tweed and the Brooklyn Tweed yarns that I'm using this um, gray marled is called caribou and then the speckled fleck of red is called long johns this is in shelter which is the same yarn that i used for my huron sweaters the shelter base and the thing about the shelter base that i'm just obsessed with is that it's a sturdy workhorse a lot of people uh, i've heard mixed reviews about shelter uh, and brooklyn tweed in general but mostly with the shelter is that it is sometimes a little scratchy 
but once you knit with it and it's worn and then it's been blocked, it really blooms and it's soft. I feel like it's quite soft and it's a workhorse yarn where I'm not afraid um, of being super delicate with it. Some of the other yarns I've made sweaters with are much softer and they seem to pill easier and um, I just feel like wearing them, you know, with zippers and things rubbing, I get a little nervous and I feel like I have to be really precious with them. But with this yarn, it is like nearly indestructible, it feels like, and it, I just feel like I wanna wear it. I gravitate towards wearing them more. So um, again, Lilanol, I have done the first, I've done the body, um, it's bottom up, and this, then I'm now knitting on the sleeves. I have one sleeve complete for the most part, but I think I'm going to rip this out and redo it because I knitted this completely to pattern and I'm realizing that the pattern is a unisex pattern, but most of the models are women. And with that there, I think the size is normally a little bit tighter uh, or the fit is a little tighter. And I found this is a, just a really, it's pretty skinny so it's kind of tight on my arms and I think that I would much prefer a little bit more ease in the sleeves so I'm thinking I either am going to just maybe um, just start with more stitches and then increase slower so it's a little bit wider and then I get to my final amount of stitches that I need or I'm going to I don't know. I've never like varied. Like I don't know if I increase the stitches all over. Well, that and that will like ruin the proportion of the body then, because then I have to. It's a raglan um, decrease. It's raglan decreases. So I don't know if I if I I don't know about the proportions. So I kind of have to look at that and figure out if I if I just kind of um, start with more and decrease less, but still have the same amount of numbers at the top that that the pattern will still be kind of will still be on the pattern um so i might just like kind of fool around with that math wise but i mean it will block a little bit but really it's it's a little tight so i'm pretty sure i'm gonna rip this out but again with worsted it's i mean it really isn't a, that much knitting um the inside i did want to show you the inside of this because it's so pretty the inside of the sweater because it's all over color work it is so it's really beautiful on the inside i love the floats they look really even and it, they just are it's just so fun i love the i really love that the way it looks i've been carrying up the yarn too let me see if i can show you where i've been carrying that up so it's really it's quite seamless you can see right here I've been carrying my stitches up and not breaking the yarn every round. So um, it really, it's not that big of a deal. The all over color work is even enough that um, you're not gonna like snag your finger in it or whatever on the inside. And then, so yeah, we have body and a sleeve, but I'm pretty sure I'm gonna take this sleeve out and redo it um, because again, I love this yarn so much and I love the way the pattern looks, that I think that with just a simple modification of a sleeve, I'll, I will much, uh, I'll wear it much more than if it were just a little too tight. So um, that's that. I, I literally could have probably just used the Huron sweater pattern and just made it with this um, text, this color work patterning on that same pattern, and it probably would have gone um, the design that I really wanted. But this one is not a round yoke, it's a raglan yoke so raglan decreased yoke so it definitely would be a little different but oh well that just makes uh makes me have to work a little bit more for the pattern and the fit but i know i can do that so that's that um the leland all sweater and then uh that's kind of taken a back seat for now just because i've been so excited about the hat and the socks um they're, I've been working up so quickly that um, I really would love a hat right now. So that's that. And then I have one other thing. Um, per, I purchased some yarn. So um, I'm trying to think like timeline wise. So for Christmas, um, I visited my parents and then I came home and then 
uh, some kind of exciting news for Matt and I, which I will get to a little later, but we uh, bought a, we bought a cabin, a space in Wisconsin, which has been super fun. Um, we decided that here in Chicago, the price to buy is still so high that it's kind of, um, we weren't really ready to purchase here in Chicago, but we decided um, that our time could be spent now, especially during quarantine, kind of quarantining and COVID, like we're not really doing a whole lot. So if we have a space we can get away to on weekends um, and especially in the summer, you know, it, it just, we're gonna utilize it so much and um, buying in Wisconsin was a lot uh, cheaper than buying here in Chicago, just property wise. So we bought a cabin in Wisconsin. We're super, super excited about it. It is literally the coziest place ever. Um, I'm obsessed. I'm like truly obsessed. I can't wait to spend like winter is there. It's beautiful. Um, it's just fun to be, it's fun being in the wilderness and kind of being um, in nature. And so that's really exciting. But um, there is a yarn shop that I will leave the name right here. I have forgotten it since, but I'll leave it right here. This yarn shop is located in Stockton. I believe that's how you say it, Stockton, Wisconsin, um, just east of Madison, Wisconsin, the capital. And they were super cute. We, I, we went in, I think like on New Year's Eve. I'm pretty sure we just were like, it was, we had from, we had like pretty much from New Year's Eve through um, the beginning of 2020 off from work. Um, and so we just went up for the long weekend and we were kind of just like, um, exploring some of the small towns near where we uh, where we have our cabin and we came across um, a yarn store and we were driving through this little town of Stoughton and there was a yarn shop and I was like oh my god we have to stop so we stopped in and the two women inside were so sweet um, you know we we went in very safe everyone had masks on and I you know um, it was just us inside the store at the moment we walked in and they greeted us. We're like, do you knit? And I said, I do knit. And they were so excited. And they were showing us all the different things. And at being a Norwegian town um, of Stoughton, they carry this Norwegian yarn, which is um, Ruma Garn Finnel, which uh, is a Norwegian yarn. It's literally like the yarn ball is in Norwegian, if you can read that. This is not focusing. Let me see if I can like focus on this. Maybe, no, not working. Well, Norwegian yarn. And um, it was super cute. I was like, the, you know, they were really sweet and were showing us that, um, that they carry this. And so they had a stunning example of um, some mittens that you can make out of this yarn. And it was the millet millet mittens i have no idea how to say it but i'm going to put it right here um by isolde teague and it's a stunning design mitten design color work design and um after feeling the yarn and feeling the uh, sample knit i was like okay i'm definitely gonna knit those because how fun and so i bought three different colors of yarn um to make this color work so i bought a, the main color is going to be in this really beautiful dark navy and my winter coat is a navy coat so it will go really well with my Oslo hat and also these colors are really traditional Norwegian which I've just felt like was so fun we're in kind of this Norwegian town this Norwegian yarn this stunning like color work so I just felt like it had to be so I went with this this gorgeous heathered kind of red um, almost like, again, that, that almost like, in this lighting, it's looking a little more orangey red, but it is kind of a cranberry. And then this beautiful soft gray, kind of natural gray, Stun like so pretty. I literally want a sweater out of this. Um, and now that I feel like I'm at my root, like I feel like now being so close to this town, this Norwegian town, I need to make Norwegian nets. So I'm very excited about that. And so I got two of the darker color and then I got the contrast colors. So that's gonna make a stunning, um, the Millet Millet Mittens by Sybil Teague. That's gonna be really fun. Um, 
This is a, let's see, this is a, blah, 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 for 50 grams, there's 175 meters. So that's, uh, let me see, 2.5 to 3.5 needles. So this is like probably a sport, I'm guessing a sport weight, right? Uh, a heavy fingering to a sport. Um, it's very soft, but also it is again, that like workhorse yarn that's gonna really make a stunning war um, warm and durable mitten. So I'm excited about that. Um, once I finish my hat and the sock, I'm wanna, I wanna cast those on. Um, but yeah, wow, that was a lot of talking about knitting. I haven't talked with you all for a while and I'm really excited because I have a lot of time now to knit. So that's it for the knitting. Um, but if you want to stick around and hear me talk about a little bit of like what's going on in my life, what's kind of going on outside of knitting, please stick around. Um, but I know some of you come to see what I'm working on, so that's fun. But I now have a lot of time to knit because, um, let's see, just early December, um, I worked again, I had kind of talked with you in the past, I work for, I work past tense, worked, surprise, worked at this um, nonprofit um, that is a kind of, I produced events. And again, in Corona COVID times, producing events is not the easiest thing because all of our events then became virtual online, which was really great um, because they were accessible and a lot of people could join from all over, but we weren't really getting any income or revenue generated. So the company organization had to make some cuts and I just happened to be one of those people that was cut. So I was uh, terminated from the job based upon the fact that not, thankfully not because of performance, but just because of money um, cuts and kind of trying to pare back to the most necessary positions to keep the organization running. So due to that, so now I'm no longer with a job, which has kind of been, it's been a lot to be honest, especially right before Christmas and the holiday season. And in these times, it just was like all stability that I had um, in my job, which I really enjoyed was kind of taken away and then I was really devastated for about a week. Um, but then I, I really tried to stay positive and think, you know what, uh, this is happening to a lot of people and I'm trying to stay positive. So I'm looking for new work now, which I also in, a, in kind of retrospect is, I'm kind of grateful for because I was given a new skill set at this past job that I now I'm able to kind of take and maybe maneuver into different avenues of work. So. We'll see what this means, but I have a lot of time to knit. And um, on the plus, I, plus side, I have the ability to work on projects that I, you know, when I was working, I didn't necessarily have the amount of time. So without having a job, it has been, yes, stressful um, because that's just kind of like looming over at all times. You know, the thought of like having to look for jobs, having to apply resume, you know, all the different things, putting yourself out there, especially in times like now, which are just so weird and um, difficult for so many of us, but I am thankful to have um, that. However, because of the lack of income, I have been kind of looking for ways that I can maybe make my knitting and um, maybe yarn dyeing something that can produce some revenue for me um, because not having any income is very stressful. <laughs> Staying tuned to that, I'm hoping that maybe soon I will be announcing um, something quite exciting, so you can stay tuned for that. But i um, hoping that maybe knitting can be a good source of uh, creativity and, um, and, you know, putting my energy into something that I really love and enjoy, but also hopefully maybe turning into something that can help produce some income for me in a time where I don't have any. Other big news, bought it, we bought a cabin, which um, <laughs> is kind of crazy timing also because like all of this hitting at once was kind of like, oh wow, you know, now I'm in a different point of my life, but um, I'm hoping to, I'm hoping that soon I'll be able to get back on my feet and um, we can continue to kind of keep moving forward. So that's that. Um, 
I have been really trying to take this time for myself and this new year 2021 as a reflective point um, being kind of reflecting my own self and um, you know getting back on track 2020 was really hard and really just kind of threw everyone in different ways and so I'm hoping that um, this has been kind of like a, a turning point where now I'm looking at myself and what makes me happy and I'm hoping to kind of get back on um, track with being more healthy and working out and feeling good about myself um, from just kind of like a physical standpoint. Um, 2020 kind of like I just lost all motivation and was like a literal sloth and now <laughs> I'm kind of like you know what now's the time to like focus I'm, I have time to focus on me and I'm going to put that energy into something positive. Um, so being creative and working on things that I enjoy and also my health and wellness is so important as well. So that's something else that I've been gaining um, and hopefully you all are as well. I know everyone is in a different point in their, uh, you know, their own lives. And so I'm hoping that 2021 will be that kind of reset that we need whether or not it's beneficial or helping us maybe move forward, but it's something that we're able to look at and be like, okay, let's see what we need as people. If you want to kind of keep up with what I'm doing, Instagram is the best place to find me. I'm posting more there and I'm hopeful that I can keep it up, keep up the consistency um, because it's actually better for me if I'm just consistent and I know you all enjoy seeing kind of what's going on. So at Pitchfork Fiber, you can find me there. Thank you for joining me. Um, it is always so exciting to talk with you and always a pleasure um, sharing what I'm up to with you all. And I hope that you um, comment below with what you've been up to, what you're knitting on, just how you are, your wellness, like what are some goals for 2021? Um, I'd love to hear all of those things. Thank you. Please like and subscribe if you like this content. Um, I'm hoping that it will be it'll be soon when I when I podcast next. But until the next time, I hope you have lovely knitting, enjoying working on whatever you're crafting or making, and please have um, some please devote some time to your own personal wellness, whatever that may be. Um, this year is taking a toll on a lot of people, and I want you all to be safe and healthy, and know that you are loved. So love yourself as well, as RuPaul always says. If you can't love yourself, how the hell are you gonna love somebody else? Can I get an amen, 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 amen? So thank you for joining me and I will see you next time. Bye. Yeah.